Hey everyone, this is Ben at Rust Sound Tech Support. I'm going to show you how you can take an MBX Pre and add it to one of our legacy systems. Today we happen to have a CAM 6.6 setup here. Excuse me, that's actually a CAV 6.6, but this option would be available to any legacy system you have, whether it's a CAV 6.6 like we've got in front of us now, a CAM 6.6, you can even take an MBX Pre and set it up on a system even older than this, like the old school CA 6.4. Um, options are also available for you to even use this method to add it to an MCAC series, which at the time of this recording is not compatible with an MBX Pre in the source mode manner that you would typically use this product in with one of the newer MCAs. So let me just show you what I have set up here. We've got our CAV 6.6. I have a pair of speakers hooked into just zone number one right now, and I also have a keypad plugged into zone number one for control as well. And then we of course have our MBX Pre. This MBX Pre is already set up, it's already unlocked, firmware is up to date, everything's ready to go for this product, and I've kept it in zone mode. So this is very important, you want to leave the MBX Pre in zone mode, you cannot use it in source mode with any of these legacy products. Source mode is only going to be usable on an MCA66, an MCA88, or an MCA88X, so just keep that in mind. And if you need any help getting an MBX set up initially, be sure to check out some of our other videos or reach out to us for assistance. So let's go ahead and take a look at the rear of our connections here. Let's go to the back of the system and take a look at what we have. As I mentioned, our MBX Pre is already hooked up, so we of course have power our analog output and our ethernet connection. I opted for a hardwired connection here, but you could certainly use Wi-Fi if you desire. Go into the back of our CAV. Get in here so you can see we of course have power. I did mention I only have one pair of speakers hooked up and this is in zone number one of our six amplified outputs for the CAV. I do have my singular keypad hooked into just zone number one. And this is where the magic is happening here. Our source connections, sources one through six. I right now just have only the MBX Pre hooked in and it is an analog input in just source number one here. All right, so we're set back up in the front of our system here, looking closer at the keypad now. This is the only keypad we have. Again, this is zone number one. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on like you would normally if you're operating this product. Power to turn on. You can hear some audio coming out. We only have our first source set up, and it defaults to source one, so this happens to be the first source. And my MBX is playing audio right now. So you can hear it if I turn this up. Let's turn it back down for a moment. You will not see any metadata on the keypad's LCD display letting you know what is actually playing because the two products aren't communicating like you would get that communication with some newer generation systems or RNET-based products, which the MBX is not control being controlled over RNET so keep that in mind. I do have two presets set on my MBX right now. So if we just position our camera over here, I can press number one or number two. I have number one set as a station on tune in. You can hear that in the background. And if I press number two that'll switch over to my Sirius XM preset station I have set up. It's as easy as that. Ultimately, when you are going to, if you're not using the preset options for number one and two on the MBX, you will want to obviously control the MBX. So that's going to be accomplished directly through the Myra Sound mobile app or an XTS or XTS Plus touchscreen keypad. I would say if you're using a CAV audio system or any other legacy product, you probably don't have any touchscreen keypads and it would not be required because you wouldn't be able to control that CAV with a touchscreen keypad anyways. So your best bet is to simply keep all the UNO S1 or S2 keypads intact. Name the input of choice. I do only have it called Source 1 right now, but you can name this to maybe www or internet just to let the customer know that this is some type of internet streaming device. So they'll simply select the Source button to cycle through sources as normal. Land on the Source input of choice that you have your MBX on. And then they can use the Russound mobile app to actually make the specific selections on the MBX device or even just cast to it from their phone or tablet using AirPlay, Bluetooth, or Chromecast as well. So these are all very good options to get that MBX squared away on your legacy product, such as the CAV that we have in front of us here. 
And one other tip I would probably add, because in the Rustown app, you do have volume control for the MBX. This is a variable output volume control. We don't at this time have the ability of setting the MBX output for fixed. So I would recommend within the Rustown app, you leave the volume on maximum. You can even adjust the settings for turn on volume to 100 out of 100 as well. And then it's essentially preset. So any options as far as what music service you're listening to or music service you're casting from your phone or tablet, it's always going to be outputting at 100% volume on the MPX. And at that point, you can still operate your volume control right through your existing keypads as you would normally expect to. I hope you've learned something today. Thank you for joining. Take care.